Hey everyone, I'm joined here with my client Nick. Nick has just finished his 12 weeks or the first 12 weeks of my online program. He's gone into his 13th week now and he's been kind enough to share his experience so far. So Nick, thank you for jumping on the call and uh, giving up your time today. My pleasure, thanks for having me. So why don't we just start with a bit more about your background. So why don't you tell people where you're based, maybe how old you are as well. Sure, yeah, I live in Melbourne, uh, but I'm from the United States and I am 41 years old. Okay, and what, I guess, what made you decide to, to reach out for a trainer in the first place? Um, really, it was pretty injury based. I felt like I had a, a specific knee injury and an ankle injury and sort of like cumulative injuries over time that weren't really getting any better. And I had tried physios before, I've tried a lot of massage, I've tried sort of my own understanding about my body and how it worked to try and approach these injuries. So um, I, I had tried a lot of things and I felt like I'd read a lot, I tried to learn a lot about, about exercise and physiology to try and get a handle on it, but it really wasn't getting better. So. I thought, I, okay, so maybe I need to find some, somebody to help specifically with these problems um, because I'm, maybe I'm not, I'm not approaching them right or I'm not understanding them. Mm -hmm. But really, it was, it was a, it was a rehab-based approach initially. Okay. Do you want to maybe go into a bit more detail about your, um, like your training history? Maybe sure. how you kind of yeah. got, got to that place? Yeah, so many of those injuries came from lots and lots of long-distance running. Um, and lots of solid punishment, physical punishment, um, <laughs> self-inflicted, but still punishment, none, this, none uh, no, still, still punishment the same. Um, some of those were uh, jujitsu and martial arts injuries. Yeah. And, um, but so my training the, the, up to that, I think initially I came from like a, many long time ago in my life, uh, came to movement initially through um, a kind of theatrical and dance approach, mm -hmm. and then uh, and, and martial arts when I was much younger, and then um, in my 30s I kind of started to approach um, uh, long distance running and, and uh, cardiovascular conditioning more more earnestly. It's always been easier for me to do strength related stuff, even when I was younger. Mm -hmm. I wrestled in high school and um, did things like that. That those those were always easier, and then coming to kind of cardio in my thirties, it was almost like a fascinating world. I was like, oh, I can't believe I can do this. This is not something my body's supposed to be able to do. So I really enjoyed it, maybe a little too much with the injuries. But um, <laughs> but then then I kind of always have come to a, back to a place where I I I've been interested in movement and how body works. So it was it was always a bit of a balance between those things, and I always thought I did pretty well with mobility and stretching like as and tried to be pretty diligent with that even even with cardio training but um it's i don't know it, it didn't necessarily solve all the all the problems that i had I yeah know. and why don't you go into a bit more detail about your cardio training because you've kind of just touched on it like you're going for a little jog but oh no it was explain long. Like, what, you long, were, what you were doing <laughs> like long long distance ultra marathon running like i started initially doing it i, I probably couldn't run a 5k when i started and mm. then um after years of of running i just sort of kept i mean it was a little just kept running and and it was one of those things like i didn't think i could ever do that it was something that i never thought i could do so my first marathon was just sort of like this is bizarre i didn't think i could do it and it's one of those things that i got physically i got more conditioned and i really learned a lot about running and i learned a lot about technique and I, I it's something that i did well with i think also because you can kind of get a certain level of of competency on your own i think and learning on your own and maybe speaking to people a little bit here and there it's not something that i feel like it's good to get a coach and I have had running coaches before and that did change things a lot, but there's a good entry level, I think that you can get to where you have some competency. So that led then to ultra marathon running and long, long, long distance. So 60 Ks and stuff like that. Um, but then that kind of broke down because I feel like there's this kind of accomplishment that comes with that. And I never thought I'd be able to move like that or do that. And that's really actually kind of, 
weirdly addictive, you know? So there's just this empty hole of pushing and pushing mm -hmm. and pushing and just sort of grueling yourself through this. But mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I kind of came back, I think, uh, both in terms of a rehab to specific things, but also wanting to kind of reapproach movement in a different way that wasn't so punishment based. Yeah. Okay. And let's just say around that time where you've done a lot of heavy training and mm -hmm. now you're coming to the realization that you need to change things up from a, maybe a longevity point of view. Sure. What was kind of the biggest frustration at that point for you? Well, I guess just not being able to, to, to get these injuries to a place where, where I, where I could do the things that I wanted to do. It's like, it's like before I started running, I, and then, I, and then I, I sort of achieved all this and my body did this stuff. And now I was sort of in a new place that was somehow further behind than where I'd started. It felt like, because I'd lost sort of so much of basic ability and things. Mm -hmm. And I think that, um, yeah, that, that, that kind of, the, the frustrating part of that is also, is also a difference in, I think, application of knowledge. Like I may understand physically a lot more about the knee after having certain injuries or the ankle, or understand that mobility through my hip flexor is important or a lack of strength in my glutes is a problem. Mm -hmm. But I, applying knowledge to fix that is very different than sort of understanding that that's an issue, mm -hmm. you know, it's sort of really fundamentally different things, but. Yeah. yeah. So and that's frustrating because you kind of know maybe what the problem is and you keep trying different things to do to fix it, but it's not really culminating in, in, in rehab or repair and that's frustrating yeah and that's a really good point as well because you could actually be onto something but then you don't have yeah. the confidence to know whether it, that's the path to pursue or not as well absolutely you know and, and definitely even in terms of loading or or i mean there, there's there, it's so it's so varied an injury or sets of injuries like that because you've got the mental problem that you you, you go through when that happens and the lack of training that all of a sudden is sort of taken out of your life Mm -hmm. And then you've got, so that's sort of its own thing to deal with, which is difficult. And then there's the actual, you know, repair of the body part, which, you, you know, it, it, unless you're really confident about your understanding of physiology and what needs to happen to repair the injury, then you might, like you said, you might be on track, but maybe you're loading it wrong or the amount is wrong or you're almost there and then you quit because you didn't think it was working to so try something else, you know? Exactly. Um, you're just in a loop of not pleasantness yeah yeah and then obviously your energy is kind of scattered because you're not really sure if, if sure, it's right yeah. or wrong yeah and you just kind of don't, there's not i think you know all, all, also injuries kind of mess with your sense of trust in yourself like to be able to run that far you have to sort of believe that you can do it <laughs> it's probably more than half of it um and then trust that your body's going to get you there and then and then now you're hurt so you sort of are now not sure if you trust that so there's a lot of trust that that's 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 important in thinking that part of it. Yeah. And before you joined the program, did you have any fears or apprehensions about kind of what what to expect or what was going to happen? No, I don't know about fears. I mean, I I I, I don't know. They weren't definitely weren't fears or apprehensions. I didn't really know. Like I'd never really had a, a like a totally focused personal trainer before, so I wasn't really sure what that would do. Mm -hmm. And I was skeptical a bit, but only because of my issues with physios i feel like a lot of things and they're great i mean there's nothing wrong with physios are fantastic but i feel like a less it's it's such a little amount of time that i would ever get with them um and there would be maybe be some physical release a conversation about the uh, about the injury you know two or three recommended exercises and see you later you know yeah. And then you're like, well, I don't really know what, I'm kind of in a similar place than I was before I got here mm -hmm. because now I'm going to try and do this, but I have no way to gauge if it's working or anyone to talk to about it mm -hmm. in terms of a reflective sense. So in that sense, I was like, oh, I don't know what this program is going to be like. Um, and I really didn't know much about all the other parts of the action program, really. I was really looking primarily for someone to help with mm -hmm. individual injury rehab. Yeah, and now that you've gone through the you know the initial twelve weeks, how has this experience been different for you to let's say other programs or other yeah ways really, of training? Really different, and so other programs. So um, you know, we chatted. I have some background with the GMB programs, and mm -hmm. I've done online programs like that, and they're really great. I think that they really help understanding some fundamentals of movement 
and they're really well stacked and they progress well and they do all of these things that help you sort of like slowly walk into skills or ways of movement or even different thinking about movement that that you wouldn't have if you didn't have those programs but there's so much more to the action program i feel like that 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 allows you to approach movement and approach your physical presence in the world in a different more full way because of the sort of mental and habit based aspect of it yeah um, that really sort of fundamentally changes all these other elements of approach whether it's assessing the injury going through the rehab doing movements thinking about things learning a new skill like there's a sort of blanket approach to 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 it that 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 the action program really helps to, i think to, to build mm -hmm. do you want to maybe is there anything specific that that stood out that you thought was was helpful and uh, maybe if you just yeah like one, one thing definitely just even just the routine stuff i think it's it definitely for me the difference between knowing and doing like mm -hmm. i come from like so with with enough sort of background and interest in in exercise and sports over time also come from like a really uh family that was very nutrition oriented when we were young like well before that was cool i had to shop <laughs> at another grocery store yeah, yeah, yeah. butter machine and no kids went there yeah and like arab and all the kids were like this is awful and i was like i know <laughs> Um, if you were born today, you'd be a, you'd be trendy. But totally, but like not. it was not. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> but like I grew up with a lot of nutrition knowledge and a lot of understanding about physical health and and all those things. But that's very different. I think what's nice there's a good reminder in action. It's like there's a big strong difference between knowing something and doing something. Mm -hmm. And I think you you just have to have the, some help to remind yourself of that sometimes, even whether well you even once the habits are established, you know, they can kind of waver and whatnot. And it's, it's difficult to, to do something, I think, um, to, to, to get, to get to a place where you feel like your, your, maybe your injury is getting better or your, your approach to your body is better or whatever aspect it is that you want to improve. The steps to get there are many. They may look simple, but there's actually like a lot of intricate parts that need to go together to do that. And doing that stuff on your own is complicated. And having tried it on my own many different ways, sometimes succeeding and sometimes not uh, in the past, I think that something that stands out for me for the program is the kind of approach to practice and approach to routine that's really good and a kind of rekindling of a sort of begin beginner's mind. Just begin again. You know, yeah. that's a great thing to find all the time because you don't, it, it, it's just removing. I mean, there's already so much to focus on when you're trying to start a new program or get healthy or fix an injury that if you sort of don't just go a little bit day by day, just do this today, get that done, you'll, it's so overwhelming. You know? Yeah, that's such a good point. And it's, it's, yeah, if you try and kind of pick all the things yourself, it's really hard to just yeah. you know, focus on what you're going to put into that hour three or yeah, four times absolutely. a week versus... Yeah thousands of programs that you're going to be bombarded with when you search the goals Absolutely. that you're after on Google. And that's the only way, that's the only way I got to the longer distances, to be honest as well, was I made myself a six month plan and then I just did it, you know? Yeah. Uh, but so, but that's only one aspect of one part of being able to do that. And there's so many other parts that have to have to happen in order to, to, to make that successful, that it's really helpful to have them kind of laid out and think about them in relationship to each other so that, um, you know, burn out or get injured. Yeah. So what would you say is the, the biggest kind of benefit so far that you've experienced in the last 12 weeks? Um, I, I, I think it's just a, a kind of, I feel, I feel much more hope, to be honest, which is great. Yeah. Like, I feel hope that these, these injuries may not, like, belabor me for the rest of my life, which is good. I yeah. feel that I can sort of be in control of them. I feel that I can get back to some things that I had not been able to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's really important because it's kind of like a fundamental approach that will be important regardless of whatever skills we're working on or whatever mm -hmm. movements we're doing. Um, and I think that that's that, that kind of belief and confidence, I think, only sort of comes after you do a program like this where you sort of go through and slowly sort of 
start one start doing and two allow yourself to like build up an understanding of the the parts that are needed to make the doing better and then just let that sort of start happening um that that kind of builds a confidence and maybe restarts some of that trust that was lost from Mm -hmm. either the injury or the you know general misuse or whatever lack of use yeah so you're just kind of slowly rewiring that belief that your body's capable of doing the things that you kind of lost hope about in the past yeah i think that definitely that's really important part of of that and that only comes from that kind of consistency and patience i think and and a kind of lack of um you know a lack of judgment the the pro a, a, th- a three-month program allows you to kind of park your critical mind for a moment and mm-hmm. say like just wait till the till the 12 weeks are done before yeah you- start being too hard on yourself again you know yeah Um, yeah that helps definitely yeah and i i guess the next question which i think would be a good kind of way to go from what you've just talked about is Mm -hmm. let's just say there's a guy similar situation to where you were so you know big heavy uh strength conditioning whatever maybe sports background lots of mileage or just a lot of training under his belt but he's kind of probably in his 30s 40s um and is just feeling a bit, you know, not really too confident now going forwards. And then he mm. goes on to Google. Mm. He is just overwhelmed about what to focus on. What Absolutely. would you recommend him? You know, what would you say like, would be the best first step for, for him going forwards? Um, I think probably like a little bit being a little honest with yourself about what you kind of want now. Mm-hmm. Um, because in that bombardment that you're talking about, it are a lot of sort of assumptions about what's good about moving or what's good about being strong or what's good about, I don't know, being healthy. Like there are all these sort of assumptions that are shoved on you and these images of these people doing either a particular skill or looking a certain way or whatever but that's all just like such a construct right it's does not that real and certainly not real for most normal people but it's really shoved on you a lot and i think you have to first initially ask yourself like do you want to look like that do you want to move like that and then why like mm-hmm. i think that there's something so great about the kind of approach either with definitely within action or within gmb stuff about a kind of idea of play that's mm-hmm. Like, okay, so what do I really want to do? Do I want to run really long distances? Yes, I do want to do that still. But I also want to be strong. But really being strong maybe means like understanding weaknesses and whatnot, not necessarily just being really, really huge. It's great to move massive amounts of weight. It's a really fun thing to do. That's not, that's, not, that's not untrue. But it's sort of like, do you want longevity? Do you want to be able to play more with your kids? Do you want to be more capable? Do you want to be more self-reliant? And if those are the kind of things that you're answering yes to more than like, I want to look great or I want to do a backflip, then Mm -hmm. you already have a better gauge of what's important to you in that bombardment. There's, there, there's now like 95% of that shit that you can just cut out. Yeah. (laughs) It doesn't apply to you anymore. You know, that's great Um, advice. I think that that's an important thing. And that leads to, that leads to programs to your programs or programs like yours, where you're sort of thinking like, Okay, how do I want to approach this? Because the thing that's always important about that is that it, it none of it, it does take it, it takes longer than you think and shorter than you think to do to, to do these kind of programs. And they're not as instantaneous as you thought in the beginning. And then at the same time, once you give them a little bit of traction, you can get results faster than you thought as well. So mm-hmm. you know, it's a bit of both of those. But I think that 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 initial thing is asking yourself what you kind of really want. Yeah, that's such a good question because I think sometimes, yeah, we can think that we want an eight pack and be at like 7% body fat. But then if you look at that person's lifestyle, you wouldn't yeah. want that. So <laughs> you know, starving <laughs> yourself. You're definitely not eating four, t- four hours a day or whatever. It's terrible, you know? Yeah. And I think that it's, it, 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 it's, it, it's terrible is not the right way to say that. It's terrible that that's kind of seems to be the the normal what we're all supposed to be after sort of uh thing if if that's the kind of dedication that you want to put in to to your body and the work that you do that's really great i really commend people that do that but that's a specific thing that they want and i, I it's not for everybody so yeah exactly 
yeah find what's right for you so yeah that was a really really good answer last question yeah. what is your maybe just share what skills you're working on and mm. what's kind of been the favorite skill that you've learned or you're excited to kind of progress uh, since you joined the program I think getting into back into ring stuff has been great. Like my pulling uh, strength has always been a little weaker than my pushing strength. So being able to sort of methodically work that up is great. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I'm looking forward to trying to uh, right now it, with, in, in, with false grip rows, pulling into more muscle up stuff's great. And also just getting back to being upside down again, which is nice. It's great. Like that's yeah. the sort of feeling of dexterity and motor control that's really nice to come back to. And especially as a bigger, heavier person to sort of, again, trust that, you know? Yeah. Not, you know? Yeah, 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 definitely. I think this, the skin, the cat is probably the most um, mm. liked exercise I've ever taught people in yeah, yeah. nine years <laughs> <laughs> for them yeah. reasons, been upside yeah. down. <laughs> Yeah, being upside down is great. Uh, I, yeah, definitely on rings, but also just on 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 my hands, like being back into a handstand and mm. stuff like that. Just feeling more capable uh, around, and also like I think you know really noticing, like again with noticing weaknesses, like even I think you just recently in this last round of the program, I had a really basic lunge, and mm -hmm. the level of difficulty in my hip in my hip flexor is great to know like i'm like well this is all really hard in a certain way and that's good and humbling in the right way because you kind of go okay that's not that's just something that like is really needs to be worked on and and you and that's great to know that yeah so much better on the other side <laughs> yeah exactly and especially you know if you want to be doing longer distance running then yeah lunges should be easy or should be Absolutely. very very easy and it's a good gauge for you to be like okay like yeah. not yet but once i'm you know in time yeah, then, I, then i can feel better absolutely yeah so that's that's great so yeah i think the favorite skills are probably on the ring stuff that but um it's really all of them that's great great all right well look again appreciate you taking time out of your day and Pleasure. sharing your experience and you get to get some great time. advice there as well so again thanks again nick thanks connor all right. All right.